Waklisi, to see Gamadicha, to Sasunwe, Adukia, to Adachi. Uh, greetings and good morning to everyone. And before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge all of the tribal leaders in the room and your powerful testimony on behalf of your tribal communities. It's beautiful to hear. Um, Chairman Schatz, Vice Chair Murkowski, and members of the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs, I want to thank you for inviting me to speak with you all today. My name is Angie Wilson, and I serve as the Executive Director for the Reno Sparks Tribal Health Center for the Reno Sparks Indian Colony here in Northern Nevada. I'm a citizen of the Pitt River Tribe of Northern California and a Klamath Modoc descendant of the Klamath Tribes of Southern Oregon, and it's an honor to be here today. First, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to testify before the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs in support of the bipartisan bill to expand the Indian Health Service Loan Repayment Program to part-time healthcare professionals. And I'd like to thank our United States Senator Catherine Cortez Masto and United States Senator uh, Mark Wayne Mullins from Oklahoma on their collaboration to propose this bipartisan bill. Sep Ketcha, thank you for your dedication to this effort. It should be no surprise to any one of us here today in our respective positions as United States senators, health policy experts, or tribal health advocates that the health care for our Indian people lags that of other Americans, despite the legal obligation of the United States to provide health care to American Indians and Alaska Natives as a trust responsibility. As evidenced in well-documented health disparities, the health outcomes of our Indian people should be the report card for how well the trust responsibility is being upheld. In addition to decades long underfunding, there are additional barriers that further compound inadequate access to care for our Indian people. And one key factor in many of our Indian health, tribal and urban Indian programs is the shortage of healthcare personnel. This is especially true for our rural and frontier based tribal reservations. As detailed in the effort on this bipartisan bill, the Indian Health Services holds a provider vacancy rate at over 25%. And while that number may seem staggering to some, the reality is that the vacancy rates are much higher in our tribal clinics and especially severe in rural and frontier-based tribal communities. I work closely with Nevada Tribal Health Directors, and here we have 17 counties, three being rural, and 11 of those are frontier with a vacancy rate as high as 50% in some of our tribal clinics. The impact of such vacancies result in our most vulnerable clinics having to use locums at such a high cost that it almost feels impossible for us to get ahead of this situation. In addition, the ability of our tribes to engage with the Indian Health Services to buy back a provider is left unresolved as their vacancy rates with I just little uh, fulfillment of the staffing needs at the local uh, tribal level. Our Indian people continue to die at higher rates than other Americans in many categories of preventable illness, including chronic liver disease and cirrhosis, diabetes, and chronic lower respiratory diseases. This month, my extended family has lost the sixth person to cirrhosis, all of which were under 34 years old. You know, while an additional family member is struggling to endure dialysis while waiting for a kidney transplant. So it's important that we look at this issue through the eyes of our patients, including, but not limited to our members with chronic health conditions, our elders with geriatric health care needs, and the overwhelming need for behavioral health services within our tribal communities. Having a regular, reliable relationship with a health care provider is strongly associated with more use of preventative care, lower health care costs and better health care outcomes. And this is especially true for our elder populations and reduced risk of preventable hospitalizations. The Reno Sparks Health Center currently employs recipients of the IHS loan repayment program, and this bill would help to support our efforts to extend loan repayment options to part-time employees, allowing improved opportunities for staffing to better meet the needs in our tribal health care delivery systems. Uh, currently, this allowance would uh, improve our opportunities to offer part-time employment for expanded access to care, such as psychiatric nurse practitioners, practitioners in women's health, pediatric, psychologists, and physical therapy. This allows our clinics to better utilize our space and schedule various providers throughout the week, while also extending services through our mobile medical, dental, and behavioral health units to the extended tribal community. 
On behalf of the Reno Sparks Indian Colony and our Tribal Health Center, we are in full support of this important bill and further advocate that loan repayment funds should be exempt from the federal income and employment taxes in alignment with loan repayment programs at the National Health Service Corps. And just real close in closing, I just want to express my gratitude to the entire Senate committee for your continued work in Indian country and urge you the importance of upholding the federal trust responsibility to our Indian people because our lives depend on it. Most uh, most of Ketcha, Sasua Aye, Tuska Subtoswatch today. Thank you for having me.